Jacob. Oh, hey, Matt. I'll be honest with you, man. I'm not going to lie to you. Please don't I'm lie. feeling a bit defeated. Why okay? is that? And not because I've taken off my hat and it's 38 degrees today, but rather because we are here with something that I don't know if it should exist. No. That is, it's deep, it's philosophical. You see, Jacob, one of the first cars we actually drove together, reviewed together, was the Fiat Abarth 595 Competizione, a car that we called the world's worst Best car. Yeah, and this one might be the best worst car. I genuinely think so. It's like Fiat engineers were given a mandate. They were given a mandate that said, make a car that everyone loves or hates. There's no in between. Here we are with the Abarth 500E. It is genuinely not a good car, but it is so much fun that I have a little tear coming out of my eyeballs every time I drive one of these things. We have had to charge this thing twice today. No other EV do we need to charge, but because this has such a small piss weak battery, it only has like 200 kilometers of range. It's not even that fast. It weighs quite a lot. It body rolls like crazy. It's got the most obnoxious sounding fake exhaust ever. It's literally a giant subwoofer under the car pumping out terrible noise, but it just works. You know what? If you put that all together, somehow it's perfection. It makes the Abarth 500E. So I'll be honest, guys, I'm torn. I'm torn about whether ripping this thing to shreds is what I need to do or whether I just need to tell you what I genuinely believe of it. So I'm going to go with the latter because I could go with the former, but I will go with the latter. I'm going to tell you exactly what I love, what I absolutely hate, what you will probably hate as well, but why I think that these things are so awesome. Yeah, it's a love-hate relationship. It's a real passionate Italian full of emotion love story. Spicy meatball. It's a spicy meatball, Jacob. Let's do this. Alrighty guys, let's talk about the way that the Abarth 500 looks, but first let's talk about price. So this thing here will set you back 58,900 Australian dollar dues. Of course, that's probably too much money and we can save you money. So head to carsource.com forward slash buy if you want an absolutely seamless car buying experience with zero hassle, the absolute best prices and cars that are actually in stock. You might as well. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, why wouldn't you? All right, let's talk about the way this thing looks now. Um, I'll be honest with you, man. I think it is f***ing awesome. It is sexual. This thing is finished in acid green, and um, I'm not going to lie. If you were on LSD, it, pr it probably would look like this. It might pop up. You've got this really cool headlight design here. I love the daytime running light. That's also your turning signal. This is fake aero. It's kind of like if you put eyelashes on a VW Beetle. It's kind I thought of what the expression was lipstick on a pig. I don't think it's a pig, though. I think it's actually beautiful. You've got the Abarth badge there, little scorpion. Abarth there. I love that. Down the bottom, you have a nice little grill. That's for your cooling, because, you know, it's got a really powerful motor. We'll come back to that. Down the bottom, you've got a bit of a white. Actually, it looks really sick. I love the white, actually. <laughs> I think that, honestly, guys, I think this is one of the most gorgeous cars on the road. Really good looking. Can I just say, it's also been a massive head turner driving it around. I love it. I absolutely love it. All right, let's check out the side. Alrighty, let's come to the side now. The thing I love is that you have a wheel at all four corners, and I love that they didn't change that from the current Abarth 595. Check this out, Jacob. You have huge 18-inch wheels. Not even the 595 got that. No, massive, massive wheels. Also got some decent Bridgestone rubber on them. The thing is they're really narrow, so 205. That's very small, but as you'll see, it doesn't actually have a huge amount of power, so it doesn't really need more than that. I love this little turn signal there too. You've got a matte finished mirror here, no 360 camera. You've also got, oh, keyless entry and go. It's also yeah. completely flat there too for aerodynamics. This is, of course, an EV, despite that fake exhaust sound, which will get louder as we come to the back. <laughs> you have a bath here. You've also got your little scorpion badge there with a lightning bug. Got zapped. Bro, I'm getting blown away by this wind. It's very strong. You've also got tinted privacy glass. Yeah, because who's going to be sitting in the back of this? And you've got what looks like a fuel door, but of course it is not. This is where you charge the car. This thing has a 42 kilowatt hour battery, so not very big. And it does have DC fast charging, of course. That's at 85 kilowatts. So it actually charges pretty quickly, considering that the battery is so small. Jacob, let's check out the bum. Let's do it. Alrighty, guys, coming to the bum now. And yes, again, all of this sound, it is completely fake. The car is electric. It doesn't make any sound. Anyway, you've got this spoiler up here, a Bart badge there too. Down the bottom, you have a diffuser and underneath is, as I said, a big subwoofer. And that produces this sound, which does sound even more ridiculous when you floor it. Take a listen. That just sound totally fruity. Absolutely tantalizing. Yeah, don't know if I love it. Anyway, um, check this out, Jacob. Oh, <laughs> non-powered tailgate. 
<laughs> Look guys, um, you actually get a decent amount of space, but it's a triangle shape, so it doesn't really quite work out. You've also got these big bags in here. One is your level one charging cable, and here you have your tire inflation kit. I'd recommend <laughs> never having to use that, to be honest. You can also drop the rear seats, although of course the front seats are too big, so you have to move them forward, and then the seats will actually drop. There's a lot of compromises if you get a Fiat Abarth 500E, but anyway, that's the name of the game. It wouldn't be without personality, would it, Jacob? If you want to have an Abarth, you have to live by its rules. No, quite literally. All right, Jacob, let's check out the interior. Let's do it. All righty, guys. <laughs> Dude, that sounds ridiculous. I'm gonna turn this off for all of our sanities. It's so loud. So display, because that's where you put sounds, electric features, and external sound. Oh. Oh, peace and quiet. That is so much better. Okay, so let's talk about the interior now of the Abarth 500E. Because I'll be honest with you guys, I really, really like it. It's a really, really good place to be. So first of all, it's actually more ergonomic now. I'm 5'11", and before my head was literally up in this sunroof thing. Now it's not, I actually have enough headroom. Don't know if I could wear a helmet, but enough headroom anyway. Also, I can actually adjust the seat now, even when the doors close, because you couldn't do that before. And look at this. <gasps> tilting and telescoping. Tilting and telescoping on the steering wheel which is unbelievable. Speaking of, it is a very nice steering wheel. I love the Alcantara, man. It's like a little Italian greeting. You got a blue dead head stripe in front of you because that's the color of electricity, apparently, Jacob. Also, the tech in here is really good. Up in front of you is a digital instrument cluster. Shows heaps of information on there, which is awesome. You've also got this pretty massive display. It's like 10.25 inches, but it's super snappy, very responsive. I've got no issues with it. You don't like that the text is a bit small. Yeah, look, it doesn't feel like they've sized the icons properly for the screen. You are such a but... nerd. I will say it doesn't have a 360 camera. It's only a reverse camera, which is a bit on the poopy end, especially for 2024. So you got Torino skyline there. You got made in Torino. These are made in Italy, which is- It's a moniker of passion. Yeah, it's a moniker of passion, you could say that. You got Alcantara here on the dashboard, but otherwise, Oh, scratcho, plastic. Scratchy everywhere. Got this faux leather here with this blue and yellow stitching that extends to these really nice bucket seats. They're f***ing awesome, man. They're some of the nicest seats, bro. They're like a leather and Alcantara. They've got a really cool pattern to them. Got a little scorpion up in the top. Storage is also a lot better than in the Fiat 500. So you've got a massive glove box here, like really big. You have quite a lot of open space here, a hidden cup holder, which is nice because you've got another cup holder under this little hidey hole, but um, it's very deep. Yeah, don't get your little espresso in there. You won't get it out. You won't get it out. You've got a USB-C port, USB-A port, and a 12 volt socky walky. By the way, there's another USB-A port here and a wireless charging pad. You've also got this, oh, adjusting center armrest. That's future thinking Fiat with, oh, it's nice and soft touch. And there's a bit of storage on the inside there too, which is nice. You have your drive-by wire selector here, which actually works totally fine. You have physical air conditioning controls. Mm. Love to see that. I love to see that. You've also got pretty massive door bins. The JBL sound system, by the way. Quite good. Bellissimo. You've also got electric door openers, but don't worry, if you get locked in, you've got another door opener. So you got two, okay? Have what you want, bitch. Oh, that is not a good horn. That is not a good horn. You have your drive mode selector here and your volume rocker there too as well. And of course this. A sunroof with a net. Yeah, and it doesn't open and it doesn't really do, like this net really doesn't do very much. No. But you know what, it does something, okay? Yeah. Let's talk about back seats because I did get there earlier and I'm not, I swear to God, I'm never doing it again. <laughs> I'm five foot 11, I've got literally no space. I couldn't close the seat behind myself. If I move the front seat forward pretty much all the way, <laughs> then sure, I can fit back there, but my head won't fit. I've got no toe room and leg room is still. <laughs> There are two seats back there, but again, good luck getting anyone in there, let alone children. But I will say the seats back there are actually really nice. Alcantara, leather. And you know what? They're great for putting a backpack. Yeah, they're great for putting a backpack. A little bit of extra storage, why not? Let's uh... Let's -a go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's launch this thing. Okay. Alrighty, Daddy Jacob. <laughs> we're gonna put the car into track mode. Doesn't seem to be a launch control, so we're just gonna floor it. Oh, what is that sound, friend? Here we go, fist me! Ooh. Oh, yes! Oh, come on! Come on, baby! Oh. Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. Ah, look. Ah. Zero to a hundred. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it! Do it. Are you ready? Do it. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Zero to a hundred in 7.64 seconds. But you know what? That was the fastest we've ever 
ever stopped. <laughs> I think. That was pretty fast. All right, Debbie Jacob, let's try this thing normally. Okay. All righty, Daddy Jacob driving the Fiat Abarth. You can't wipe that bloody stupid smile off your face, can you? It's seriously, this car is so stupid. Okay, we're gonna put the car into Turismo is its eco mode, street is its normal mode, track is its mother track mode, saucy mode, baby. Oh, <laughs> oh, the engine, bro! It literally sounds like a seven four seven turning on. Bro, they haven't done anything. They just like pitch it up. It just keeps pitching up. Apparently, they used real <laughs> Abarth five nine five Competizione recordings for that sound, and they just left it in f***ing first gear. You know, <laughs> yeah. that's really annoying. And the worst part is. You can't turn it off. No. You cannot turn it off. Not while the car's driving, at least. I want to give you guys some context here. I said to Jacob, I want to experience this raw for the first time. I want to get my reaction on camera. So this is genuinely the first time I'm driving a... Oh, here in track mode. <laughs> oh, oh my God. I tell you what, it, uh, immediately what's standing out to me is how much more planted it feels than the original petrol. But that's probably because the extra weight, but we'll get to that. It does, yeah. So powering this thing is an electric oh. motor. An electric motor from the exact same battery pack as the normal 500E, which is unfortunately 42 kilowatt hours in max and uh, 37.8 in its actual usable. So Jacob, that's not a lot. What power are we putting out here? We're putting out about 114 kilowatt of power and 234 newton meters of torque. Which interestingly is less total kilowatts and newton meters than the regular 595 Competizione, which believe it or not, they're still producing and selling like 40 years later. For like half the price of okay, this, anyway. Wait, we're here through the corners. <laughs> oh my God. So I will say that this thing weighs 350 kilograms more than that car, but it is actually faster pretty much in every way until you start to get like well into the 100 kilometers. You know what I mean? Fair enough. Oh, that sound. Oh, oh my God. I'll say the steering is a little bit vague. I'm not going to lie. I actually completely agree. It's not as direct as the petrol version. No. And there is a little, oh man, there's a bit of body roll. <laughs> That's a lot of body roll. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That suspension is weirdly soft, but at the same time, uh, you can feel everything. I'll tell you what, it's going around the Whoa. corners pretty well, though. Uh, and then you just hear that droning in your ear, and you're like, why? Oh, it's why so are annoying. They and you know what? This isn't your first experience with a car that has electric sound. No, the um, Ionic 5N has done it so much better. Yeah. It's... I mean, it has fake gears as well, so it's like yeah. a whole different car. To be fair, that car was $111,000, but also to be fair to that, it did zero to 100 in 3.38 seconds, so. I think it's a super car. Yeah, whereas this, it, it is exactly like a like a Fiat 500 above, what, what's it called again? 500E. No, no, it's exactly like the, the 595 Competizione exactly. that we reviewed, right? It's exactly, it's just so stupid. stupid. <laughs> it's so stupid, but it still puts a smile on your face. On it, your face. It's right? like a little, um, what's the word? It's a little uh, it's a enthusiast guy. <laughs> it's a spicy meatball. All right, here we go. Oh. Tickle my pickle, saucy corner. <laughs> What? That was, you know what? That was kind of interesting. I guess that is kind of like what would happen. Cool. All right. The steering is weirdly light, man. Oh. I don't love it. All right. I'm scared. Hairpin number one. Ooh. Oh, a oh. bit of under. I'll tell you what. Jeez. It actually handles really well. Oh, man. Those tires are gripping up pretty well. Oh, <laughs> as I say that. Dude, we were going up there fast, man. Look, well, that, was, fast. that was incredibly impressive. But you know what does it better? What does it better? The bloody Fiesta ST. Yeah, look, you could get a lot of cars for a lot less money that yeah. do a lot more than this. Not to mention, with our current efficiency, like the longer term efficiency of this car, 17 kilowatt hours, you're getting around 220 kilometers of range, or the WLTP is 250, but 220 is your kind real of world. real world range. Yeah. Um, probably less, if we're being totally honest, for most people, if you have any sort of, you know, if you want to have a bit of fun, don't want to drive this thing in eco mode the whole time. But before we started filming, the car was at 96%. We actually had to charge it so we yeah. could make sure that we could drive it. That's the first time we've ever had to do that. A car like this, like I'm so for having every car sold in the Australian market, but unfortunately a car like this, unless you're only driving in city and you very, very occasionally drive anywhere sort of rural or exactly. remote. Exactly. And you no have access to a fast charger in your home. Yeah, it makes no sense. No. It makes really no, no sense. But it is a lot of fun. I'll give you that. And it's not a bad car. 
it's just stupid. It hasn't lost its character. Like, it is pretty cool. And they, they've look, kept it. They've tried to do something really cool with the sound. Maybe it's a bit of a miss this time. Yeah, it's a In bit my of opinion. Miss. But you know what? I think if they just continue tweaking in their little Italiano way, it'll get there. It, it embodies a every mark. stereotype of <laughs> Italian car making, which is like. Just, yeah, just unapologetic it's and just un- ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But also so passionate. So fun. It's a lot of fun to drive and it shouldn't be because really, in all respects, it is one of the worst EVs sold here. But it is so much fun. <laughs> it really is. And you know what? Like the way it makes you want to drive, it just makes the rage even less. So. <laughs> yeah. Now, who cares? Who cares if you can't get to your destination as long as you're having fun? Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, let's get into our uh, final Finale. thoughts. All right, Daddy Jacob, final thoughts on the obnoxiously loud Fiat Abarth 500e. What do you think? Honestly, this is probably one of the least practical, probably one of the worst value cars you could possibly buy on the market, but 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. There is no like logical reason for you to go out and spend almost $70,000 on one of these things here in Australia at least. Maybe it makes sense if you live in you know Paris, right? But out here in literal rural Victoria where we've had to charge this thing twice. Jacob, I'm sorry, you're probably gonna have to charge this thing again on the way home. Okay? I don't think I've ever been forced to sit alone with you <laughs> for that long. There's something genuinely not right with this car and yet it works so well, I love it to bits. Every time I get into it, I have a big smile on my face. It has embodied everything the 595 Abarth is, which is just a cluster f- of components you put together and somehow it works. Even though it shouldn't, because it's heavily compromised. Yeah. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. And also, if you want to buy one of these things or any other car, we'll get you a better price on one of them. Don't worry. Carsource.com forward slash buy. Take the hassle out of buying and get better prices than in-stock cars. Why wouldn't you?